suit up, strap in, warm the tires, and leave on yellow. Time for the Mitsu Times podcast. Presented by MitsuTimes.org, the home of the fastest Mitsubishi cars. With your host, Josh. Hey guys, what's going on? It's Josh with Mitsu Times. Today my guest is Matt from Action Clutch. I'm really excited about this one because I've been seeing these guys everywhere and I uh, finally got a chance to reach out and talk to them. I'm glad that we got to partner up. How are you doing today, Matt? I'm doing great. It's nice and nice, cold and rainy here in uh, Los Angeles and enjoying the, the the lack of sunshine right now. <laughs> See, we must, uh, we must have traded weather on this one because it's uh, high 70s here in Kentucky. Oh, uh, let me know when I can go fly over there and escape this for a little bit. <laughs> I, know, I was hearing last week about blizzard warnings and stuff and thought, man, this this must be the end of the world for those people. Uh, yeah, it's it's pretty rough. People forget how to drive in California once once any sort of uh, rain or weather hit. Yeah. So it's kind of kind of scary. Well, Matt, I want to get right into it because Action Clutch is so special. Uh, you know, a lot of the Mitsubishi community, we're used to dealing with uh, people, clutch companies that aren't in the U.S. So I want to talk about how, when, and why Action Clutch got started. Yeah, sure. So, I mean, it's it's quite a long story, Um, but the original owner, his name was uh, Gary Bart. He started the company in 1960, uh, and it was mostly like motorcycle type stuff. But in 62 is when Action Clutch was established. what he offered to the whole community was essentially just OEM rebuilds because back then there wasn't really any performance things. It was all just OEM replacements or rebuilding, you know, OEM components, replacing the friction materials and the ductile iron plate on the pressure plate, so on and so forth. And, you know, through over the years, we just started diving into performance. Um, But the current owner, he actually walked in off the street looking for a job in 1990 and walked into Action Clutch and Gary gave him a job and he literally started from the bottom from, you know, sweeping floors to, you know, essentially running the place. That's and amazing. then, uh, yeah, it's, it's, uh, it's, it's honestly the, the true American dream story. You know what I mean? Yeah. Worked it's his way something to that, yeah exactly and you know in so he started there in 1990 and i want to say in around 98 there was a a street racer that went in looking for a performance clutch and that was the first performance clutch that they built and he never left he still does business with us to this very day and his name is bc from uh, bc motor engineering okay and uh so we started you know a little dabbling into the performance market in around 98 um around 98 99 uh the previous owner gary started to get a little sick so his kids kind of came in and started running things and in sadly in 2000 he passed away and his kids continued to run the business alongside of the current owner alex and they just they struggled with it they couldn't because everything reminded them of it and so they you know basically made them an offer and said look if you're interested in buying the company this is how much it'll be and you know alex went around and borrowed money from friends family anybody who he could borrow any money from and you know took over the company and you know it's it carried on the traditions uh, pretty much through the early early 2000s um, and then more and more performance customers started coming in thanks to uh, BC and then in 2010 or 20 well so much between 2010 and 2012 uh, the owner's son Eric uh, came on board and started helping around the shop and started really, really focusing on the performance aspect of things and learning literally the ins and outs on, you know, co- friction coefficients, clamping force, um, you know, different types of materials. And he was the one that actually started to bring the company into the 21st century by building a website, building all the social media channels. And from there, it's it's just been explosive. We've 
we've really expanded quite a bit over over the years and you know if it wasn't for eric's forward thinking you know who knows where we would have been today for sure and, and you know like you said it, it's so forward thinking that you, you guys are working to hit your customers on every single whether it's through email whether it's through magazines whether it's through tiktok facebook instagram like you guys are out there whereas we don't really see any other manufacturer in your industry doing that yeah you know, the the other aspect of it is, you know, a lot of them, they don't really provide proper education to their customers. So there's a, a very widespread misconception from a lot of people that, you know, oh, you don't need to break a clutch in. And, you know, the, it's, it's kind of crazy because they say, I have this brand and I never broke it in. But if you go to that manufacturer, they have breaking requirements as well. Right. It's just not really spoken about and they don't really take care of the customer if they, you know, don't break it in and something happens. For sure. Uh, whereas with us, you know, if you've got 100 miles on a kit and you never broke it in and it's slipping, if everything looks relatively good, we'll replace the friction materials for you for a small cost, send it back to you and have you kind of restart the break in process, kind of save you the headache of having to replace an entire kit. Heck yeah. Love that. So Matt, I want to talk about, you guys have a wide range of, of products that you offer. I want to talk about, you know, what, not only the, the range, but also uh, the, the stuff that aren't clutches that you offer because uh, we see a lot of manufacturers, either they only offer performance type clutches or they offer, offer OEM type clutches, but you guys offer both and then some. Yeah. Yeah, we, we really try to provide a solution for pretty much anybody that drives a manual transmission. So, I mean, we have even uh, our own little selection of OE-type replacement kits that's going to be, you know, not a performance organic friction material. It's going to be more of an OE style. You know, everything would be to OE spec, and it's going to be a lot cheaper than buying an OEM replacement kit and still have that action clutch quality. Um, and then getting into the performance parts, I mean, we've got, you know, single disc kits with three different, four different friction materials. And we've got multi-disc kits of currently two sizes and about to release a third, which is seven and a quarter, eight and a half, and soon to be 10 inch. That really hits pretty much every power level from just your stock to basic bolt-on car all the way up to your, you know, your seven second drag cars. Wow. So Matt, I think we already talked about it a little bit, but I want to talk about what it is about action clutch that sets it apart from the other brands in your industry. Yeah. I mean, honestly, there's a, there's a few of them. Um, I I mean, one of the things that I really want to start off with is we, we are the only manufacturer and we actually have a patent on this. Uh, but all of our sprung kits come with a fully enclosed retainer plate. Oh, wow. So what that does is, you know, you've got a lot of drag racers, a lot of drifters that are constantly clutch kicking, put a lot of abuse through it. A lot of things that we've seen with our competitors is springs like to eject. So that's why a lot of racers tend to lean towards a rigid disc rather than a sprung because mm. they don't want to have catastrophic failure due to a spring popping out. Um, we've never had a spring pop out and it's, hundred percent because of those retainers and you know that that's one of my favorite innovations that we've done to the market because it's it's kind of kind of a big deal um for sure you know aside from that you know we're really easy to get a hold of you know anybody can call us we answer we actually answer our dms like we we try to make ourselves readily available to anybody and even go as far as offering technical support if you run into a snag or you're unsure if, if something feels right or sounds right. We're really adept to help you out with that. Yeah. And, and I wanted to go back a little bit, Matt, what you were saying in, in the beginning. Um, another thing that you guys are doing that you don't see anyone else doing is the education part on like TikTok and social media to say, hey, you know, there is a break in process or, hey, you know, this is this might be the best kit for you in this situation. Yes. 
you know, it's, it's one of those things where, you know, I've had some people question why we do that because they're like, well, you, all you're doing is you're helping out your competitors. And I said, well, our end goal is to help out our consumers because whether they're going to buy our clutch or a competitor's clutch, we want to make sure that they're going to save themselves headaches because like, let's be real, like racing isn't cheap right. and a lot of people aren't operating off of uh, uh, an FD or a huge drag team uh, budget. So, you know, every, every little thing counts. So if we can educate them on, Hey, you know, if you do this, this is a potential outcome. So you need to be aware of it. Don't make this mistake. Yeah. It actually saves a lot of people, a lot of headaches. Yeah. Not only are they educational, Matt, but they're also super entertaining. I, I love watching those, <laughs> those videos. Thank you. Yeah, we have, a, we have a fantastic media team here. So. so, Matt, I wanted to talk about the future of Action Clutch. I know you talked about adding some more multi-disc uh, setups in your, in your store, and I, I wanted to talk about what other things can we look forward to uh, for the Mitsubishi cars. Yeah, so uh, for the Mitsubishi car specific um, – I would love to hear if you guys have any particular um, applications that you need solutions for, because I'm always looking to see how we can really jump in and offer up something that the people want and need. Heck yeah. Um, you know, um, other than that, you know, all of, all of this industry is changing. You know, we've got all the, the EV standards and whatnot that are slowly taking effect. And so we're, we're definitely, we have a couple avenues that we're we're working into in terms of the EV stuff, so I'm sure that it will eventually start to uh, play a role, especially with the Mitsubishi's, because they're such a great chassis. You know, people are, will probably be starting to EV swap them. You know, and yeah, if they haven't already started. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I mean, we've we've seen it with uh, with the Z's a lot because they've just got a, a larger wheelbase in the rear. Yeah. But, I mean, we've also finally uh, expanded into the Middle East uh, this year. So we're, uh, we're really trying to expand our, our product offering to even a lot of uh, international vehicles. So I know there's a lot of Mitsubishis that we weren't able to get here in the United States that is possibly available in other countries. Heck yeah. So our goal is to start offering up uh, some support for those as well. Awesome. And... I wanted to kind of piggyback off what you were just saying, Matt, because you guys offer more Mitsubishi vehicle kits than any other manufacturer. I mean, anything from the first gen Eclipse all wheel drive to the fourth generation Eclipse to Expos to Starions. I mean, if, if you have it and it's a Mitsubishi, you guys have a kit for it probably. Yep. Yep. That's, that's very true. Uh, we service pretty, even the VR4s. Um, literally all the Evos, even one through three, um, you know, you name it, it's, we, we can build a kit for it or we've got something ready to go right off the bat. Yeah. So, and I just wanted to, to say, Matt, I know there's people out there with maybe a three G eclipse or something that's, that's not as loved in the, com in, in the performance community that maybe they think they can't get a better upgraded clutch kit, better than OEM. And you, you, I wanted to point out that you guys not only offer that, but offer it all the way up to like a stage six for the 3G specifically. So if you're out there yes. with a 3G and, and you're looking for a performance clutch, here's your answer right here. Yep, we, uh, we definitely, uh, we try to make sure that we can <laughs> definitely support even the oddball ones because those are the ones that are usually loved the most. <laughs> yeah. Matt, before we jump on to the next question, I wanted to um, make sure that people have some way. Where can people contact you? Like you said, if if someone has a need for a clutch that needs to be a, spe a specific size that maybe you guys don't have listed, where can people reach out and say, hey, I'm looking for this setup, uh, this size, this vehicle? Yeah, so... Honestly, we, we have, again, uh, as I mentioned earlier, we have a really good customer service team. We actually answer all of our, our Instagram messages, for example. So even if you just have a quick question, you can shoot us a message on Instagram or you can call us at the shop. Uh, our number is 323-269-6051. Um, and anytime we're there, we'll answer the call and we'll, you know, help guide you and educate you or 
you know, get you into the right product that is going to suit your, your use and your, your power level. Awesome. So Matt, I kind of wanted to go through the stages with you. Um, the Iron Man, the, the stage one, stage two, stage three, stage four, stage five, stage six, and the twin disc kits to kind of tell us the difference and, and what would be my best option based on my setup. Sure. So I like to refer to our stage one through three as our, our street kits. Um, those are the kits that you're not going to really struggle too much driving around on the street. You're not going to damage your input shaft because they're all sprung. Um, it's, it's, it's more of a, a performance option that is not really putting you in the position of having to uh, have a dedicated race car because it's not comfortable on the street. Uh, but our stage one is going to be good for, you know, uh, NA cars or even uh, factory turbo cars that just have basic bolt-ons. Um, I wouldn't recommend doing anything with uh, with E85 in the mix if it's a if it's a boosted car, because uh, that might be a little too much for uh, that organic material. Uh, but that's gonna feel very similar to OEM. Uh, what sets us apart from you know the OEM counterpart is our organic material has a high copper count and a little bit of Kevlar mixed in, so the copper is gonna provide more bite and heat dissipation and the kevlar is going to provide uh, longevity so then uh, moving to our stage two kit that one's going to be a little bit more of a performance aspect i usually recommend that to people that are doing a lot of road racing or time attack um canyon carving things like that no no drag racing or or drifting because the nature of the material is not really going to hold up to that type of heat uh, but it, the stage two is personally my favorite. Um, I have personally run that car in a, in a that that kit in a car that was making far more power than we would ever recommend to anybody, and never had a single issue with it. Um, but again, key thing is I broke it in very crucially. I, I broke it in for about twelve hundred miles versus the thousand miles that we recommend, and after. But I think it was about fifty or sixty thousand miles of abuse. I ended up selling the car, and it is still grabbing like day one. Wow! So that's yeah, that's a perfect perfect street clutch that's going to give you a lot more bite and not make it to where it's uh, not comfortable to <laughs> drive on the streets. <laughs> uh, the stage three is where the the drivability starts to get a little bit tricky, uh, just because our stage three is a, a six puck design. Uh, for the friction material, we use uh, Meba ceramic uh, buttons, which is literally the highest quality um, ceramic friction material you can get on the market. It's, it, it dissipates heat extremely well. It handles abuse like no other. And, you know, it, it really, uh, it, it takes a, it stands up really well to both drag, drift, road race, really anything. Um, the stage three, I usually recommend for, for people that are, you know, depending on the vehicle, it's going to be roughly about a 400, 450 torque uh, application. And, you know, that's going to be pretty, pretty nice on the street. The only downside is with any six puck, you're going to have a little bit of chatter. Um, and that's just the nature of the, the six puck design and the ceramic material combined. Uh, but once everything's broken in properly or, or properly heat cycled, everything it, it will minimize. It's not going to be as pronounced. Uh, but typically, you're only going to hear it when you're engaging in first gear and letting off the clutch and same in reverse. Uh, the Stage 3 is definitely going to, due to that style of a disc, it's going to grab pretty aggressively. But the Stage 3, since it's sprung, it dampens it quite a bit and makes it a lot easier to, to drive on the street. So that would, that would be a good option for those, uh, you know, low to mid power drag or drift cars that, you know, are looking for something that's going to be able to serve two purposes. <laughs> <laughs> now the, the stage four, stage four is, is pretty much identical to the stage three with the exception of the hub on the disc. So that is a, an, an unsprung disc. We are, only recommend that for race applications only. Okay. If you drive the car on the street at all, get the stage three because 
running a running a rigid hub on the street is like um, we have a, a little analogy at the shop where it's like running a marathon and wearing sandals. <laughs> Your feet are going to be all beat up and blistered and it's, it's not going to be a good time, yeah. right? But if you wear the right shoes, it's going to be nice, comfortable, and you're going to perform even better, right? So stage four, that's that's going to be probably for the, the around the 400 torque dedicated drift missiles or drag cars that never see the streets unless they're, you know, getting trailered around somewhere. And yeah, that that's... That would be the ideal <laughs> situation for those. Yeah. Um, so the stage five and six, those are very similar to the stage three and stage four. Okay. Um, the difference between those is stage three utilizes a single clamp load uh, diaphragm. Okay. The stage five and six uses a double a double heavy duty diaphragm, so it's going to have double the clamp load. Mm. So with that clamp load, it's going to bring a heavier pedal feel, and it's also going to drastically increase your your torque holding capacity. So depending on on the application, our stage five and six is going to hold anywhere between five and six hundred torque easily. Um, I mean, specifically with uh, with the Evos, I've seen people even push a little over 600 torque on our stage five and six hmm. which i don't recommend i will say i don't recommend that <laughs> because you know even if it is broken in properly it's it's just a matter of time right it's it's you know um so moving from the stage six we start getting into our our race products our heavy race products so after our stage six we have another kit that kind of bridges people from the single disc to the twin discs, and we call that our Iron Man. Okay. So that kit uses, again, the same heavy duty clamp, double clamp load pressure plate that is used in the stage five and six, but it uses a centered metallic friction material. Oh, wow. So this material, it, it sounds very aggressive, which, you know, it is relatively aggressive, but when you actually drive it, it's, it's pretty easy to drive. It's not. It's not a, a super aggressive engagement as you would necessarily think, um, and it holds up extremely well. This is this is actually a really, really popular car for for both drag and drift. And I mean, it's the, just the nature of the material as it gets really warm, it tends to soften a little bit, hmm. right? And when it softens, it seems to just grab even more. It's 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 really a a very interesting versatile material and it dissipates heat fantastic you know it's it, this is definitely one of our our uh, customer favorites i mean we've got a, a local guy out here with uh i think it's a r32 gtr that is running i think nine nine second quarter miles on our iron man he's oh, making wow. a little over 700 horsepower which that's <laughs> that's pretty that's pretty phenomenal Heck yeah. you know Depending on the, the depending on the application, the Ironman's going to hold up to about 650 torque. You know, and I've I've seen people push it a little bit more than that, and it still get longevity. But you know, there's there's always the outliers. We <laughs> we gotta <laughs> you know be conservative a little bit because not everybody will break it in the same or drive the same as right. you know everybody. So. Um, so the, the Ironman's available on both sprung and, and rigid. Um, you know, we know that there's a lot of people that daily drive 600, 700 horsepower cars. And if you're, if you're one of those people and you kind of fall within that torque range, the sprung Ironman will be a pretty good option. Um, even though we, we don't really recommend it for the street, but if you have to, the sprung version is the one that we would be completely content with you running but don't run the solid <laughs> <laughs> and now now we get into the big boy kits so our we've got with the twin discs we've got two two different size options that is available to most of the well, not most of them but a lot of the mitsubishi specifically the four g's um we've got a seven and a quarter and we have an eight and a half so the seven and a quarter that's going to be good for 800 torque and that is going to be a very aggressive on-off engagement. There's there's really not a whole lot you can do to modulate or slip the clutch. You can a little bit, 
but it, it will take a little bit of time to get that feeling because mm. you know it, you, you need it to be snappy especially if you're going down the drag strip and trying to reduce every little fraction of a second off of you know every single pass and then if you're drifting you know you want to have that very harsh quick engagement that you can count on every single time right um so typically the seven and the quarter is the more popular option for drag cars just because it's a, a smaller diameter and you know you're going to have a little bit more a little bit more uh, aggressiveness out of it but that's going to be good for 800 torque um i've got a number of eight second cars running that running that twin disc with no problems uh, it's not until you start pushing down low in the eights, really knocking on sevens doors when the triple disc would come in. So we've, uh, we've got actually a few, a few records on our, our triple disc right now. Uh, two of them for B series, uh, Hondas and one of them for K series Honda. Oh, wow. And yeah. And, uh, all three of those are seven second cars and it's, People are always amazed at it, but one thing I will say, we, we do see some people that think, okay, well, I'm making 900 horsepower and 600 torque. I, I'm going to get a triple disc just because I know that's a better kit. Mm -hmm. Now, the, the drawback to that, you have three discs, but the friction material is a little bit thinner. Mm. So you're going to get a lot less longevity out of it than you would if you got a twin. Right. The twin disc will give you a lot more life than running a triple so if you aren't at that triple disc power level i highly recommend to stay at that at that twin disc level yeah um it the the friction material that we use currently is a very similar uh formulation to the iron man it's a, a heavy centered metallic um material that has a lot of iron in it so it really it's really difficult to to get those to slip uh, I'm going to be completely honest. I want to say the only times that I have seen it slip, it's usually due to some sort of grease or oil contamination, mm. um, which I will say this right from the start. Any clutch kit, any material, any uh, grease, oil, or lubricant that gets on that friction material, it's going to slip. That yeah. that will 100% kill that friction material. So always, always handle with care. <laughs> <laughs> So our uh, our seven and a quarter triple disc is going to hold, uh, I believe, about twelve hundred torque is uh, where we where our our numbers sit, and okay. we've got a lot of guys that are kind of knocking on knocking on the doors of twelve hundred twelve hundred torque and still still holding up fantastic. So I'm really excited to see kind of how far how far we can push that before we've got a develop a, a quad disc or <laughs> something <laughs> that's going to require a little bit a little bit more holding yeah so, so the i i personally for for the evos right i like the eight and a half twin disc that we offer okay it's it's kind of a, a nice middle ground between the twin and the triple yeah it's it's going to have a 950 torque holding capacity and and that that's a little conservative you you know, you probably get a little bit more out of that just because there's more surface area. Uh, it's also going to be a lot easier to modulate just because it's it's a lot larger. So it's going to be a little easier to slip and, you know, just get get set on the line if you're doing drag racing. And it's, yeah, that's it's a phenomenal, phenomenal option. And with, with the 8.5 at that 950 hold, uh, torque holding mark, you know, if you're right on that cusp, you don't want to go triple, but you're making too much for a twin. That's going to be your your next uh, jump up. Okay. I do have one more product I can kind of talk about. Sure. Um, we we do have a 10 inch twin disc that's going to be hitting market soon, uh, but I have to double check. I think it's going to be a little too big for for a lot of the Mitsubishi Bell housings. Um, but once we have everything. Uh, you know, ready to hit market in the next couple of months. Um, I'm going to start exploring, you know, how far we can, you know, migrate that into, right. you know, the Mitsubishi realm. Okay. And, um, with, uh, with the twin disc, we do on request also have a, uh, an organic twin disc, mm. which uses organic, uh, facings. 
you know, it's it's going to be a, a lower torque holding capacity. I want to say off the top of my head, it's around 600 or 650. Um, but it's it's going to be a little bit of a better option for those that are making more power. And, you know, again, not recommended. And But they do drive it on the street. It's, it's going to be a little bit more forgiving for them. Okay. Matt, you kind of already answered it, but uh, I, I gave uh, everyone a, a opportunity on Instagram to ask you guys any questions that they may have. One of them was, uh, there's no triple disc offered on the website for the Evo, but it sounds like you you do offer that option, just got to hit you guys up. Yes, so I, I can kind of elaborate a little bit on that. <laughs> so uh, as, as I mentioned earlier, we've been around since 1962. Right. So with Eric bringing us into the, the 21st century, there's still a lot of holes. So, you know, a lot of the product data and, and everything was all just done just off the top of the head. So I've actually uh, spent almost the better part of the last year developing a massive uh, spreadsheet that contains all of our products and all of the the fitments and mm-hmm. everything, which I'm actually going to be pushing out to the website uh, today or tomorrow to finally update all of our listings okay. to reflect our our full offerings. So Look forward those to should that. be available very soon. Awesome. Yeah, I know. I seen some uh, triple disc for like you said the the Honda applications, and w- whenever I seen that question, I thought, man, I know I seen triple disc on there before. Mm-hmm. But, yeah, and then and specifically for the Evos, all of our all of our twin and triple disc uh, come with a, a hydraulic release bearing. So it's the hydraulic release bearing is going to be a major benefit because it's going to take a lot of that that heaviness out of the pedal. Even though our twin and triple disc don't have a very very heavy pedal compared to a lot of our competitors, it's it's going to make it a little bit easier to modulate and kind of you know shave off maybe a little bit of a <laughs> little bit of time off your pass for sure I, I i wanted to to talk about the hydraulic clutch re- or the hydraulic uh clutch release bearing because i seen a lot of people talking about uh how well it, it worked for them and you know just that time in the staging lanes of you know having to sit there in the heat and hold down the the heavy clutch pedal it really helped them out yeah, yeah, it's it honestly it's it's something that I usually recommend to people. Uh, it it's going to make your life so much better. You know, you're going to have a much easier pedal to modulate. You're going to be able to get on and off it way quicker. And you know, the only downside is if you're used to a heavy pedal, you're going to feel like you're driving a stock Honda. <laughs> <laughs> oh, the other thing I forgot to mention. Um, a very, very important thing that I've noticed more and more people are overlooking with the, the multi-disc kits. Anytime you run a multi-disc kit, you have to run a pedal stop. Hmm. If you don't run a pedal stop, you're going to over-travel that bearing, and eventually where that force is going to be going is right to your thrust washers. So if you're not, if you don't have a pedal stop and you're just sending it, eventually you're going to wear those thrust washers down and have some nice crank walk that's going to give you even more headaches to deal with having to rebuild the engine and nobody wants to deal with that no not at all already uh got a bad enough reputation for crank walk we don't need any more <laughs> exactly <laughs> so i wanted to talk about the benefits of the puck style clutch versus the full face clutch i, I know uh you know we don't have to educate people on how a clutch system works but i know a lot of people either they have a a nearly stock car and jump straight to a six puck clutch or maybe they have uh you know a mid nine second car and they're still running the full face but i guess in in this situation you know the iron man is is a full face clutch and and it works great so I, i don't know maybe there's there's a benefit that i'm not aware of well, it's uh, so with the Iron Man, it's a lot of it has has to do with the friction material. Uh, so, like I was saying, when there's a lot of heat and put into it, it tends to soften a little. So uh, that's that's one of those clutches that I've not been able to <laughs> find people to make it slip, other than if it's contaminated. Right. Um, but a lot of people like to jump to those six pucks just for the aggressiveness. Mm. So you know, we we even offer a four puck in a lot of these, which is going to be even more aggressive than the six puck you have less surface area so 
when you have less surface area, that clutch is working even harder to, br- you know, bridge that that connection between the engine and the transmission, and it's going to be an even more on-off engagement. So, usually the four pucks are 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 the kits that drifters are more going after. Gotcha. Um, so, but a six puck, it's it's just going to be far more aggressive when you reduce the the amount of surface area. You're, you know, it's going to be less and a lot more heat is going to be put into those areas. So, you know, it's, it's probably better to stay to the six puck personally, (laughs) but it's, uh, it's more for the snappy, quick, harsh engagement that you're going to get. Okay. So Matt, I see on Facebook, a lot of people talk about this clutch, um, for this quarter mile number. You, mm-hmm. whenever you were describing the stages, you were talking about this clutch based off of torque numbers. So, should I buy my clutch based on my power goals or my quarter mile goals? That is a fantastic question. So, I would highly discourage anybody from uh, going off of you know quarter mile times because you know you could have very very drastic time differences just based off of the weight of the car, not even having comparable power levels Mm -hmm. so if you go that way you're potentially going to either get too much clutch or not enough and you know like you mentioned all clutches are rated off of your your torque rating from the crank so if you say well i'm running i'm running uh eight second passes so i'm going to run a triple disc because this guy's running a triple disc it's you know you want to go off of your actual power level yeah um if just like the scenario I mentioned earlier about, you know, going into a triple disc too soon, you're really going to shorten the lifespan of it. You might only get a full year of, uh, of events out of a triple disc, you know, okay. whereas you could potentially see two or three out of a twin. Makes sense. Mm-hmm. So Matt, can you tell us about your lightweight aluminum flywheel and your chromoly lightweight flywheels? Because, you know, just taking a, a brief look at your website, I see, these amazing flywheels that are almost half the price of your competitors. So what is it that's different about your flywheels? Yeah. So, um, all of our, I'll start with the Cremoli. Um, when it comes to flywheels, I'm very partial to the Cremoli over the aluminum for, for a few reasons. Uh, the Cremoli is a solid one piece, so you don't have a bolted or welded in ring gear to an aluminum, uh, flywheel that's got a bolted in, steel facing for the friction area Mm. you you've got more more replacement parts and it's a little bit more labor to deal with an aluminum but aluminum has its own benefits um with the cremoli you can literally resurface it like you would an oem flywheel and you're going to get a lot a lot of uh return off of it just from that one aspect alone um when it comes to cremoli the weight is usually going to be about 40 to 50 percent lighter than your OEM counterpart, okay. so you get a really good um, reduction in weight uh, just jumping to the Cremoli. Uh, typically for turbocharged cars, I'll always push the Cremoli just because it's a little heavier, and turbocharged cars tend to respond a little bit better to the slightly heavier flywheels than the super ultra light aluminum. Um, with the uh, the aluminum flywheels, those are those are honestly really popular with the guys that are all motor. Okay. So if you've got a, an all motor build and you're not revving up to, you know, ten thousand RPM or nine thousand RPM, you're you're going to be perfectly fine with it. It's uh, it's going to be anywhere between sixty to fifty to sixty percent lighter than your OEM counterpart. So it's it's it is a, a pretty big uh, reduction in weight from the Cremoli but it's going to serve you better if you're in an all motor aspect. Gotcha. So the, the other thing I forgot to mention that the our Cremoli flywheels are all rated up to 18,000 RPM. Oh, wow. So they, yeah. So, <laughs> I mean, we, we put them in, you know, rotaries and, and things like that, and they've got to be able to handle those extremely high RPMs and, you know, money shifts happen as well. So, Last thing you want is your your flywheel to break apart on you when yeah. you already destroyed a bunch of other things. <laughs> yeah, come through the hood. Yeah, exactly. 
So Matt, you, you hinted at it a little bit, but I want to uh, just go back and, and double tap this one. What what products and services are you hoping that Action Clutch will offer in the future? Um, so you know, I can't talk too much about the EV stuff, but we definitely are are pursuing uh, our our own avenue in the EV world. So that way, we can continue to you know provide solutions to the motorsports guys. That's not going to cost an arm and a leg because. All the EV stuff right now is you've, you've got to have very deep pockets to right. really do any of that. Uh, so we're working on trying to change that a little bit. Um, you know, the other big product that I mentioned a little bit earlier is going to be our 10-inch twin disc. Um, so a little, a little light shed on that. Uh, we've been uh, testing our prototypes with, uh, with our FD driver, Jeff Jones, for the last two years. And we gave him two two twin discs told him hey let us know go give it give it the the seven layers of hell and let's see how it performs and believe it or not one twin disc has lasted him two full formula drift seasons oh my gosh <laughs> yeah and he actually swung by just yesterday and brought it over and it's probably got half life left in the friction pads wow. so it's pretty pretty exciting and um, that's going to be a, a a fantastic option for you know anybody that has you know i know a lot of guys are running like cd09 transmissions i'm not too sure if there's a lot of mitsubishi guys doing that at this time but that's that's going to be a, a a heavy hitter for for those uh types of swaps as well man that's exciting yeah so what would you say are action clutch's goals for this year matt well, um, as you kind of touched on a little bit earlier about all of our social media stuff, you know, our number one thing this year is education. We, we really just want to equip our, our, not just our customers, but just the car community in general with the knowledge needed to make proper decisions in this. You know, everything from just selecting the right friction material to the right clamp load based off of our stages um, the type of use that the car sees and even going down into like, you know, contaminating friction materials, proper pedal free play adjustment, just all the little things that we see, see day in and day out that people overlook or disregard and result in a failure. So that way we can hopefully start saving some people some time, money and headaches, whether it's our product or not, you know, it's, it's it's definitely very important for us to to help educate the market. Awesome. That way, you know, they're better equipped. That's great. I love that. Look forward yeah, to uh, seeing some more of those. Oh yeah, we we've got quite a few uh, already shot and ready coming down the pipeline. So there'll be a lot of fun stuff coming out soon. Great. So Matt, what events? Uh, is Action Clutch going to be at in 2023? Maybe we could come out and uh, see some of the products in person or talk to you guys in person. Yeah, absolutely. Um, we, we do have a little bit of a smaller event schedule this year than we did last year just due to, uh, you know, our expansion to the Middle East and right. things like that that are kind of going to cloud our ability to go. Um, but, you know, the next event that we have coming up is uh, TX2K, which is just in a couple of weeks from right now. Yeah. Um, we're really excited to, to be there because I've been trying to get there the, the last couple of years and we were able to secure our spot this year. So that, that one's really exciting. Um, on the, on the drift side of things, um, we're, we're going to be at a uh, hot pit auto fest, which is a Southern California based, uh, drift league. Essentially okay. it's, uh, it's very similar to like uh, clutch kickers where, you get very good payouts from every single round. So it's it's more beneficial for the grassroots guys that are, you know, really struggling to, you know, pay for all of those right. very expensive uh, right. repairs <laughs> and consumables. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yep. Um, and then, uh, like every year, we'll, we'll be at Formula Drift in uh, Long Beach and, uh, and Irwindale this year, which is going to be, uh, I believe, in April and December. Um, we will also be at uh, the import face-off drag events in Bakersfield as well as in Las Vegas. Awesome. Um, and I'm 
currently trying to see if we can attend FL2K as well as uh, World Cup Finals in Maryland. Uh, that would be awesome. Yeah. There, there's a lot of other little events kind of sprinkled in there, but those are those are the, the big hitters. Yeah. Uh, World Cup Finals for me is like Christmas time. Oh, yeah. <laughs> that's that's the one that, that I do not want to miss no matter what because yeah. that's, that's literally – the World Cup. <laughs> yeah. Even bigger than the soccer one. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> so, Matt, we talked a lot about social media. I want to give you an opportunity to uh, share those uh, social media so people can get on there and, and see these awesome clips that you guys are making. Yeah, absolutely. Um, all of our social media channels on all platforms is just Action Clutch. Um, so we're actively on TikTok, Instagram, Facebook. Um Facebook, you know, it's it's part of the nature. Their their messaging system is very clunky. Yeah. So if you if you do want to reach out to us, DM us on on Instagram because that's the easiest trans transition. I know TikTok requires you to follow each other and things like that, so it makes it a little clunkier. But Instagram is the way to go if you want a quick response from us. Yeah. It's amazing that they're owned by the same company, TikTok or uh, Instagram and Facebook, and the the messaging is so much worse on Facebook. Oh, yeah, Facebook was the golden child, and now it's the the unwanted child. Right. <laughs> so, Matt, is there anybody that you want to give a thanks or a shout out to for uh, you know helping Action Clutch along the years get where it is now? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, first and foremost, I'd love to thank all of our supporters and customers from over the years. You know, without you guys, we we wouldn't be here today. You know, it's 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 all because of you guys. Um, you know, uh, I'd also really like to shout out some of the the companies that have you know partnered with us on you know our own shop builds or helping us provide solutions to the market, such as uh, Alpha Injection Clinic. Um, they're, uh, they're a pretty small uh, up-and-coming uh, fueling system company, and they they do some 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 really impressive stuff over there. So if you need some fueling, they're a good guy, a good company to reach out to. I uh, also want to shout out ARP um, Fasteners. Uh, they helped us co-develop a, a solution specifically on the K-Series that was a kind of rampant problem going around uh, with aftermarket cranks, um, the companies producing them weren't drilling the crank holes deep enough, so wow. OEM style bolts were bottoming out, and it was actually a really big problem. It was kind of plaguing everybody, and once we discovered what the issue was, we, you know, why not hit up the best fastener company in the in the entire industry For and sure. co-develop bolts that are not going to back out? So. We've got little little things like that. We're always trying to <laughs> find those improvements. Um, you know, I also want to make a, a huge shout out to you know BC uh, BC Moto Engineering. You know, he's he's been such such a long time supporter, and you know he's he built some amazing stuff, and honestly surprises us with some of the some of the things he throws our clutches into, and surprisingly holds up. <laughs> against our recommendation it, it's pretty pretty impressive uh i also like to shout out uh lewis at vcd racing uh he's uh it's a local shop that does all of our uh local warranty installs so you're local to us and you buy a clutch kit from us and don't know how to do the work don't have a shop you're more than likely gonna meet lewis and you know that everything's gonna be done properly and if if there's a any sort of mistake, you got that warranty on it, so yeah. extra peace of mind. You know, uh, uh, I'd love to also shout out our our entire sponsorship team. I don't want to call out anybody specifically, in in uh, in hopes I don't leave somebody out and and get roasted for it. But <laughs> everybody that we work with, thank you guys so much. You guys, with again, without you guys. We, we'd be nowhere. You guys have provided us so much, so much insight and, you know, knowledge on just what, what you guys put these things through and how we can improve the products. And we take everything very serious. And that's why we've evolved so much over the years. 
almost forgot. I got to give a huge shout out to our boy Jeff Jones. Last year had his his first uh, podium win at FD in the final round, and we're we're super proud of him and excited for this next year. And you know, especially with his uh, his uh, co-founding of Hot Pit Auto Fest with uh, RJ Contreras. That's that's a they're changing the industry for for all the drift guys for sure. Yeah, without a doubt on that one. They're they're making it fun to watch again. Exactly. Yeah. Well, Matt, I want to say thank you for, you know, working your magic and allowing Action Clutch to come on board to be a sponsor of Mitsu Times. It is an absolute honor to work with such a company as Action Clutch, so thank you. Yeah, of course. It's it's a pleasure to work with you, man. It's, it's, it's honestly been pretty phenomenal, and I'm, I'm really excited to continue working with you, man. Heck, yeah. I, I love the, uh, you know, the chance to get to, you know, get Action Clutch out there and be like, hey, you know, have you heard of these guys? Well, you know, you're, you've are you been running this forever just because such and such runs it, so maybe you should try this. And, and oh. you know, like you were talking about throughout the podcast, the innovating and, and changing stuff up, that's, that's you know, what we're trying to do. We're The Mitsubishi community is obviously always trying to go quicker, so is everyone else. But, you know, we're really – you know, it seems like we hit the peak years ago, but we're really, really starting to get there. And it's, it's companies like yours that's making it possible. So thanks again, man. I, I really appreciate it. Yeah, of course. It's, we're, we're here to provide that, that solution for you guys. So anything you need, just hit us up, even if it's custom. We'll do that stuff too. Awesome. Well, thanks, Matt, for taking the time to come on here and uh, share Action Clutch's story. I hope that we can... Uh, get some cars out there fitted with some action clutches so that they can have a successful racing season. And uh, I hope to hear from you soon. Yeah, absolutely. I really appreciate you for, you know, inviting me on here and giving me the chance to chop it up a little bit. Yes, sir. It's been phenomenal. I love I wish we could do this every day. This is the kind of stuff I, I love. <laughs> hey, you know, whenever you get another availability, definitely down and, I can uh, talk to the owner. Maybe the owner can step in and, and chop it up a bit as well. Yeah, maybe we could do like a, a tech talk on clutches or something one day. Yeah, I'm very interested to do that. Heck yeah, maybe we could do a, a YouTube thing or something so more people, it'll hit more people. Yeah, definitely. Also, it'd be easier to kind of have a visual paired right. with some of these uh, descriptions as well. Yeah. All right, Matt. Well, thanks again, and uh, I'll definitely be uh, hitting up your inbox soon. Sounds good. I appreciate you. I'll talk to you soon. Yep. Thank you for listening to the Mitsu Times podcast. Check out our Instagram and Facebook for daily updates. Get added to our list by going to mitsutimes.org and clicking submit a slip. Thank you to all of our sponsors.